Um, if one finds evaluation documents, support documents, Khalitsa doc certificates, refusals, selection certificates, or any other uh, court, he should return them. If one finds any documents in a leather bag or in a case or a roll of documents or a bundle of documents, he should return them. Now, how many constitute a bundle of documents? Three fastened one to the other. Rabbi Shimon Gadamil says if they are of one who borrows from three, he must return them to the de debtor. Or if of three who borrow uh, from one, he should return them to the creditor. If one found a document among his documents and he does not know who gave it to him, he must remain until Eliyahu comes. If there are receipts among them, he should do what is written in the receipts. Okay, and these are the new ones now. No, um, Elimitius, we, we started the Elimitius already. Right. Okay. Some fines, some, I'm sorry, you, no, it's, it's right, number one, um, the base Aleph. Some fines belong to him and some he must announce. These fines belong to him if he found scattered produce, scattered monies of small sheaves in a public domain, round cakes of pressed figs, loaves of a baker's bread, strings of fish, strings of meat. Fleeces of fleeces of wool, fleeces of wool brought from their country, bundles of flax or tongues of purple wool, these belong to him. This is the word of where is mayor, mayor, mayor. If Yehuda says anything containing something unusual must be announced. How? He found a round cake and a potsherd was inside it, or a loaf and a money was inside it. But ben, El, Shimon ben Eliyaz, Eliyaz, Eliyaz says, all new utensils need not be announced. There must there um there must be announced if he found, if these must be announced. If he found produce in a vessel, a vessel just as it is, money in a purse or, or a purse just as it is, piles of produce, piles of money, these coins one upon the other, small sheaves in a private domain, loaves into homemade bread, pieces of wool taken from the craftsman's workshop, jugs of wine or jugs of oil, they must be announced. Okay. If behind the fence, that's it? Okay. Yeah. So... Um, just just to to remind you of the principles of Hashava Saveda, um, the the things that you don't even need that you don't need to announce and you're allowed to keep for yourself are things that first of all they have no siman, right? Which means that if the owner has lost them, then he's abandoned hope of them. Okay, and secondly, there must be things that the owner must know that he has lost because um, there's a machlokis in the Gemara between Rava and Abaye, and this is one of the one of the very few things, only six, uh, Ya'el Kagam, um, there's six cases in the whole Gemara where the halacha follows a baye rather than rava. And we're talking about Yeo Shilomidas. That if, uh, if rava says that you can have Yeo Shilomidas, that if somebody loses something and he doesn't yet know he's lost it, but when he does realize he's lost it, he's going to have Yeo <laughs> then you can assume that he's already had the Yeo and you're allowed to keep the object. Whereas a baye says that if you pick it up before he's had Yeo then he, you're, you're a shomer and you have to keep it. You have to keep it for him. So there's no. So, so he holds there's no yeshulomidas and anacha for Okay, and that's and that's the. So Abaye explains our Mishnah Aleph how all of these cases are cases where for sure the owner already knows that it's lost, and since it has no siman, he's already had yosh. Okay, Mishnah Base talks about the things that do have siman in mind, where you can where you can tell that this, who this belongs to, and therefore. Once there is a siman and and uh, then the object then then the owner will be male and not have yeosh, and therefore you have to pick it up and announce it so that the, so that the owner can um, uh, can come and claim it. Now Mishnah Gimel is going to give us the middle case um, where there's no siman, but uh, if there were a siman, you would, you would be obligated to take it. Or there might be a case where you just it, it was put there on on purpose. And you're not going to be doing anyone any favors by picking it up and announcing it. Rather, just leave it where it is. So either right. because there's no yush and and the owner, but the owner will come back and find it, um, or or that the or that uh, the, or that there's a, a siman, but it's clear that the owner put it there on purpose. So matza achar gafa or achar gader. So uh, so the hiding place first of all is kind of hidden away. It's not. Very well protected, but it is. Uh, it looks like a deliberate placing. Gozalos mikusharin. So he finds uh, some little birds that have been tied together. Okay, they're alive, alive birds, and they clearly belong to somebody because they've been tied together, and they're not really going to escape because they're tied together. Um, but there's not. Um, so or bishvilin shibasados, or it's it's put in. It's in a, one of the one of the 
um, pods that was found uh, that, that's going through one of the fields, and he finds these uh, these birds there. lo Just don't touch it. Walk on by. The owner will come back for them. Matza kliba ashba. What happens if you're if, if for whatever reason you 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 you're digging in the in the garbage and you find a and you find a nice kli in, inside there, something that typically would not have been thrown out. Im If it was covered, lo yigabo. Just leave it there because somebody stashed it away there. It does, might not have a, it might not have a simon on it, but uh, somebody deliberately put it there. It was and, and and assumed it would remain hidden. So just leave it there. Don't don't yeah. take it. However, if it's open, then it's completely unprotected, and somebody and somebody might come and uh, come and steal it. And therefore, you look for a simon on it, or and and if it's got a simon, you pick it up and you say, okay, I'll I'll take it and uh, and announce it. Mata begal yashan. What happens if he finds a matia inside a, a heap of stones or a, an old wall that's uh, that's been around for? Centuries, let's say. Okay. okay. Now this must be talking about where the object itself also looks very old. Okay. Because Hare Elu Shelo, he see he can claim it for himself and say this is this is like was dumped here by whoever lived here a hundred years ago, and for sure there's you. It's got rust on it, and or it's it's like an old uh, it's old gold. It's it's clearly worn. Um. So so you can assume. That this now uh, is belongs to somebody who's died long ago. There's no, nobody has any claim to it, and you're allowed to keep it. That's okay. Matzah, because but if it's something new, if it's something new that was hidden inside a that was inside a um, a pile of stones or whatever, then you have to say, okay, that that falls back into law. Yigabahen. Don't touch it. Somebody else, somebody else put it here deliberately, and I'm going to leave it. Matzah, because el chadash. What happens if he finds it inside a new wall? Okay, so he's, he he was uh, he was fiddling around inside inside the wall. You know the walls uh, the walls are just like stones loosely balanced on top of each other, not not like our walls. And there's plenty of place to stash away something. So he so he finds something hidden inside a wall, but it's a new wall. So if it's something where um, it's from uh, it's in the outer half of the wall, then it's the and something that the the owner would have you on it or that he's that he's forgotten. So let's just see why why is he allowed to keep it? Um, he's allowed to keep it because we say no, it must be one of the bnei rishus harabim put it there and forgot it. And when he remembered, he is, he has yush because it's it's been a long time and uh, and he knows that he's got no sim on him. So whoever's found it has 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 the right to take it. So therefore, uh, therefore he has yush and you're allowed to keep it. But that's if it's um, in the outer half of the wall. But but if it's on the inner half of the wall, then it belongs to the Balabais. Now, the commentary, the Gemara explains on this that um, that this is only referring to some to an object where it's uh, you know the let's say it's it's sort of just a sack of money you know that's that's got a that's got you know just you know got a drawstring tied up into the top and it could easily have been put in from the outside or from the inside. But let's say for example it's a knife, and the knife is when the knife is put into the wall. It's very clear which direction it was put in from, because the handle is going to be pointing to wherever the wherever the handle was they put it in. So then it doesn't. So if it's if it's further into the wall, but the handle is pointing outside, then the then the then the finder from the outside can keep it because it's uh, it's clear that it was from the Bnei Rishus And conversely, even if it's like right on the outside, but the point is but the point is towards it, clearly that the 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 balabais on the other side of the wall put it in there. So then he's got then he's got to leave it. Now, what happens if the Balabais is uh, um, is is a, 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 um, is a landlord, a okay. short term landlord, right? So let's say he's got a hotel. Okay, so so the so the, so the Balabais is running a hotel over here, and uh, you walk into the lobby, and find a matzia. You find a you find a banknote on the on the ground. So do you have to go to the, to the hotel owner and say, look, I found 200 shekels here, yeah, you know, it's in your property, you should, you should keep it. No, you don't. Because the, because the hotel is, is just like a railway station with people coming and going, there's absolutely no proof that it belongs to, uh, to anyone. Um, and therefore, whoever lost it has had you already, you pick up the money, you keep it, even though it's inside the hotel. If, however, it's behind the counter, as we'll see in the next Mishnah, that's a different story because that's a private domain of the owner. 
So we'll see that more explicitly in the, in Mishnah Dalit. And he picks it up because the, the, the owner of that money that was outside the behind the desk, outside, but just yeah. on the floor, um, yeah. he, has, he really doesn't think he's going to get it back. Yes, exactly. That's a, uh, so, right. so money is like your best is like a classic case of something that for sure has no simanim and has uh, and has yosh immediately. I always feel bad when I find money though. I say I'm going to put it in sedaka because I always say somebody's missing something they probably need. You know, I get the hargasha. And it's 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 a good it's a you know it's a good sensitivity. Um, technically speaking, there's no need to do that. You're allowed to keep it for yourself and you know give maser on it or give tomesh on it, however much you right. give. Um, right. And that's and that's all that you really need to give. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I had exactly the same experience a few months ago. I, I was walking to shul one day and like I found uh, like 220 shekels you know, had, had just fallen on the on the ground over there, and I. I picked it. I looked around. Nobody's running for it, and say, "Oh, I just dropped that." Picked it up. I said, "Okay." So, so like I thought, "Okay, fine." So this particular amount of money I'm putting into my uh, into my tzedakah pouch, and uh, you know, whatever. But but you know, I I, I took that off my cheshbon of the uh, right. What? Right. Yeah. right. Aside from the, aside aside from the percentage that I would have set aside from that to, to the master anyway. Sometimes many of those things happen at Chavez. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, So, if a person is walking into a shop and he finds and he finds money lying on the floor of the shop, However, behind the counter, basically, right. that's the space where the where the where the, where the shopkeeper alone goes. Then it belongs to him, so that's presumed to be his money that he dropped. Similarly, we've got a money changer sits over the desk. And there's money in front of his desk, even as directly in front of his desk, it's presumed to have been dropped by one of his customers who has now had Yosh. That's yours. But in, behind the counter, basically, is again his. Okay, now if uh, somebody purchases, or, or not purchases, yeah, he, pur he purchases fruit from, his, uh, from, from another Jew. Okay. Or his friend sends him a package of uh, of Paris. And, and inside the package, he finds money unexpectedly. So now he says, uh, says the mission, um, then, uh, then he is permitted to, to keep that money. Why is this? This is talking specifically in a case where the guy he's taking it from is a dealer. Not that it's like, you know, he took stuff off his lemon tree and sent a present to his friend, because then obviously it, it comes from him. If, it, if, it's, if it's obvious that the fruit came from, uh, from, from his buddy who sent him the, 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 the fruit, then he's got to send back the money. Because, but if his friend is, if the friend we're talking about is a dealer and he gets fruit and gives out fruit and gets fruit and gives out fruit, then there's no evidence that it comes from his friend. It could, be, it could have been from one of the people that he bought from. However, if it's a bundle of money, if it's not just like loose change or whatever, if there's actually like a little purse with a certain amount of money in it, that's enough. That's a simon. And therefore, it's like any other Aveda where he has to take it and uh, and make a announcement. Uh, this is, uh, I found this mitzvah. Okay. So Mishnah Hay asks, uh, asks a question on the Pasuk because the, the Pasuk uh, that talks about Hashavas Aveda says, uh, uh, the, the Pasuk is It says you must do this for his clothing and also for any other uh, lost article of his of your friend. So the Mishnah asks uh, uh, Kasha, why did you have to mention the, the Simla at all? Just say uh, and, the, and the Simla is included. So why did the Torah have to mention Simla specifically? Because there's something to learn from the from the clothing. Just as a um an, an article of clothing is uh, specific to a person, she it's 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 just it's it's unique in the fact that it's it's got a siman on it. Okay, the clo the clothing is not we're not talking about like mass produced in Vietnam clothing. Um and um Sure. 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 Can you give me just one minute? Yes, I got this call. I'm sorry. I'm very okay, sorry. No problem. Hello. So, so Beggar has got Simanim and it's got claimants. 
Yes, that's Tovim. You've got people who are claiming it. You need both of these things. Not just that. If it's just got simanim, but nobody's going to ask for it, then then you're allowed to keep. If if it's if it's got no simanim, but and, and people are asking for it, it's too bad because they don't have simanim. So you've got to need both of these things. I've called the Rashi Yesh for simanim, the Yesh of Tovim, Chayav Lehafiz. So that t- teaches us the basic halacha of uh, of Hashavas Aveda. It's got to have simanim, and it's got to be something that people want. Okay, and with that, we're going to conclude today's shiur, and I'll leave you to do the chazaras on yourself on your own. Oh, okay. Um, and Yitzhak Shem will meet up again next Sunday because I'm going to be. Well, actually, you're leaving. That's right. That's right. Just a little reminded me. Okay, yeah. so you'll be back next. We'll start next Sunday or yeah, yeah. next Sunday. Okay. I'm, I'm arriving back on Friday morning. Yeah, but you're going to be out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I have a great trip. I hope things go yeah. really well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for giving yes. me the time. Thank you. Bye.